how do you take your teaching from the classroom to an online setting so that it looks really good but still keeps that intimate feel of the classroom? Okay, so I definitely don't have all the answers, but I want to share with you what I've learned so far. Hello everyone, welcome to Attic Philosophy. Here in the UK, it's the first week of university teaching. I know lots of people have been back teaching already. A lot of us are taking all our teaching online. I'm gonna be doing all of my teaching online this semester. For a lot of us, it's the first time we've done that and we are putting a lot of thought into how actually can we do this online? How can we get that feel of teaching in the classroom and maintain that through videos, through online teaching? Okay, so this is something I've been talking to a lot of people about. We've been exchanging lots of great ideas, what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. I've talked to people who have done this and have got lots of experience in it, who had lots of good ideas, and I wanna share what I think are the best ideas with you. So I'm gonna do this in two parts. In this video, I'm gonna concentrate on the technical side of doing a really good teaching video. So thinking about what equipment do you need to make sure your video looks really good and sounds really Really good. So really this video is applicable to anyone who's doing any kind of online interaction, whether that's lecturing or teaching or doing meetings or you're giving music lessons or you're a student who's having to do some online presentations or whatever. And then in the next part, I'm going to look at some crucial aspects of classroom teaching and techniques you can use to get them working online. So the too long didn't read version, my recommendation for most people is you're gonna use the camera that's already in your laptop or iPhone or iPad. You're gonna use a dedicated shotgun video mic like this one. You can get these really cheap on eBay. And you're gonna use a dedicated light source like this one. Again, you can pick these up really cheaply. So now I'm gonna go through the three most important areas of making a really decent video. The sound, the lighting, and the camera you use. I'm gonna talk through what you're aiming for in each of those cases and why that recommendation I just gave is good for pretty much most people. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about if you wanted to go a little bit further and upgrade from that, what might you do? So I'm gonna start with sound. I think sound is the most important aspect of getting a really good video. Why is that? If you have a really great looking video that has appalling sound, it's really hard for anyone to follow. On the other hand, if you have a video that looks kind of meh, but it sounds really great and sounds really clear, people can use that, they can get the information out of it. Chances are lots of students are gonna be looking at your video on their phone or on a small screen. They're gonna be listening to it. They might not be looking at it all the time. Okay, so it doesn't matter if the video quality isn't amazing, but if the sound is really bad, if there's bits that are inaudible or just the quality is really bad, it's gonna be really hard for people to follow it and they probably give up halfway through. So what are we aiming for in a good video sound, in a good quality video sound? We're basically trying to maximize the direct sound from your mouth, the, the, the voice coming out of your mouth, and we're trying to cut out background noise, okay? And the background noise can be two things. There is the room sound. So as I'm talking, my voice is bouncing around the room. It's echoing all around. And I wanna get as little of that as possible because that can sound really nasty in comparison with the direct sound. And then there's also outside noise. So there's wind noise, there is aeroplanes flying overhead, there's the baby crying downstairs, there's the lorries going past, and there's the builders in next door's attic and their kind of colorful use of language. I don't want any of that getting into my video. So one aspect of quality is how much direct sound are we getting into that microphone? So the other aspect of the quality of the sound you're recording is what kind of tone are we picking up? What kind of frequency range are we picking up? If we use a really bad microphone, you're gonna get a really nasty tinny sound, okay? If you use a decent quality microphone, you're gonna get a much nicer sound. And if you want someone to listen to your video all the way through, it's gotta have the kind of sound that you can listen to for a certain period of time. Okay, so these two factors, getting a nice sound and getting as much direct sound versus background sound as possible, influences the kind of microphone we might wanna to use to make a video. So let me run through some different options we could use, and I'll say why I think the, the dedicated video mic is a pretty good option for most people. 
Okay, so first option, the one that everyone's got, the microphone on your phone or laptop or iPad or whatever. Why don't we just use that? There's two reasons. First is chances are when we are uh, recording a video, the camera's gonna be a certain distance from our face. My camera's about, about a meter away. If the microphone is that far away from your mouth, it's gonna be picking up a lot of background noise as well as the direct noise, okay? So it's gonna be picking up a lot of the rumble, a lot of the room reverberation, and it won't sound great. Secondly, the microphones on our phones or laptop, they are really, really tiny. A microphone is like a speaker in reverse. And if you have a really teeny tiny speaker and you play music through it, it's gonna sound really tinny. Exactly the same applies when you're recording your voice. So we can eliminate the first of those problems by having a microphone that's closer to our mouth. So if you use headphones and you use the microphone that you find on your headphones, okay, because it's a lot closer to your mouth, it's going to pick up a lot of direct sound and a lot less of the background noise, the builders outside, the room reverberation. But it's still a really tiny microphone, so it's going to get a bit of a tinny sound. So the option I recommend for nearly everyone is to buy a dedicated video mic, okay? So I've got this one here. They come at a whole range of prices, but you can buy versions that are really cheap. Have a look on eBay. You don't have to spend a lot of money on these. So they're designed for capturing people's voice on video. So they can be used a certain distance from your mouth and they have a very narrow range of pickup, what's called a hypercardioid. Uh, pickup range. So it will ignore the sound that's coming from the sides and the back and just pick up what's right in front of the microphone. Okay, so if you have it pointing directly at your mouth, you'll basically be picking up what you're saying and none of the background noise. And because the microphone is a lot larger than the one that you find in your headphones or on your laptop, it will pick up the whole range of your voice. Okay, so it'll sound a lot nicer. So that's a really cost efficient way of getting a really good talking sound on your video. One thing I would say about video microphones is they're typically designed to sit on top of a camera and I wouldn't use them in this way. So this one here, it's got a hot shoe for sitting on top of my camera, but I don't use it like that. If I have it on the top of the camera a meter away, it's just going to start picking up loads of background noise. I want it just to pick up my voice. Okay. So I've got it on this microphone stand uh, about a foot away and I've got the microphone stand arranged so that you don't see it in the shot. But you know, that's just because I'm a fuss pot. You could have it a lot closer to your mouth if you wanted to. There are plenty of other microphone options out there and I think it can get a bit confusing with all the different options. So let me just run through a, a bunch of different options and explain why, although they're great for many things, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them for doing online teaching videos. So you have dynamic microphones. So something like this, this is a Shure SM7B. It's a broadcast mic. It's what the BBC use, I think. Something like this will give you a fantastic sound for doing podcasts, for doing radio. The two downsides of this is it's much more expensive than a dedicated video mic, and it's designed to be used really close to your mouth. So if you wanna use a mic like this, one option is you put it on a little stand, and you have it sat on your desk like this. That will give you a really, really great sound. However, I think it doesn't look great in a teaching context to have this right in front of your mouth, but that's just my preference. You know, you might be fine with that. Another downside of using a mic like this, the signal from these is really low level. So you're gonna need a mic preamp to boost it up before you can plug it into your laptop or camera. This sounds really great, but you've got a large outlay of cash before you get your system working. There's also condenser microphones. So something like this one, this is actually a DIY effort. This is the kind of thing that you see in recording studios for vocals. So again, this will give you a fantastic sound. It's great at picking up the human voice. Condenser microphones are really, really sensitive. So it's gonna pick up lots of background noise. They're designed to be used in a completely quiet recording studio, okay? So if you're recording it in a house where there's cars rumbling by and kids downstairs and all that kind of business, you're gonna get a lot of rumbling and shouting and all that business on your video. So okay, I'm not recommending those. This this microphone too has an XLR input, so you would need a special lead and a mic preamp in order to get it up to a level that you can plug into your laptop. But you can now buy USB condenser microphones that sit in your desk. They've got a USB lead. You can plug that straight in your laptop. So they work pretty well. They're very easy to use and they can be cheap. I still don't think it's the best option because they're very, very sensitive. You're going to get lots of background noise. I don't think they are as good for making videos as the dedicated shotgun video mic. 
There's other kinds of mics you can get. So something like this, uh, a Zoom field recorder. This is a really great thing for carrying around and recording um, interviews, things like that. It captures a room sound really well. I don't think it's great at capturing just one person speaking. Slight variation on that theme is something like this. You can plug into the lightning port of your iPhone. That works really well. These are really cheap, but um, it's good at recording a whole room sound. It's not so great at capturing the direct sound from one person's voice. OK, so I think out of all those options, by far the best and probably the cheapest option is a dedicated video mic. Okay, so that's sound. What about lighting? Lighting is the second most important aspect of getting a really good clear video. Okay, so more important than the quality of your camera is getting a good amount of light going into that camera. If you've got a kind of a so-so camera, but you've got plenty of light around, you're going to get a good image. If you've got an amazing camera, but you don't have enough light, you're still going to get a bad image. If you're focusing on one person talking, they should be nicely illuminated in the background less so. And the person in the foreground should be nice and sharp. Okay, you don't want to be out of focus and to help your camera focus, plenty of light on that subject gets you nice, bright, clear, focused pixels. That's what you want. So how do you go about getting plenty of light on your subject, on yourself if you're filming yourself? Well, you could use daylight. Daylight is the ideal kind of light. It's really bright, it's really powerful, and it's the right color, it's the right color temperature. Indoor lights tend to be way too yellow and make your skin look a bit weird. But the trouble is, it's often too bright, or it's not bright enough if you're filming uh, when it's raining or at night time. I mean, I'm having to make these videos whenever my partner's not here, whenever the baby doesn't need attention. I kind of need a regular source of light that's always going to be the same. If you have bright sunlight falling on your face, you're going to get a very harsh uh, picture. Some bits are going to be overexposed, like blown out white, and some bits are going to be in shadow, and that's very difficult to look at. So what you want is diffused, even light. So the kind of thing you get on a cloudy day. So for all of those reasons, I think a dedicated light source is an absolute must. It gives you the ability to shoot your videos whenever you want or whenever you can. It gives you the right kind of light, the right color temperature, a kind of a neutral soft light, and it allows you to position it wherever you want so you can illuminate your face without illuminating all the junk or whatever you have in the background. So you have lots and lots of options for which kind of light you want to buy. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get a really good light that will do fantastic for just this kind of video. So what I've got here is it's basically a bulb on a pole in a little reflector box with a bit of material in front of it that helps to diffuse the light. So I don't want a bulb shining right in my face like a torch that's going to kind of be really harsh and, and make me kind of squint. What I want is a diffuse but bright light. So a bright bulb with a bit of material in front of it will help to get it lighting up all of your face without any shadows. One really popular one is the ring light. So if you're familiar with the YouTube makeup tutorial, you will, you will have seen these or at least you will have seen the effect of these. So a ring light is something that sits around your camera and the idea is because the ring can be fairly large, the light source isn't coming straight at your face, it's coming in from the side so it eliminates the shadows. But if you have it close enough to your face, it doesn't have to be super huge. So it's a really good way of having a really nice, powerful light source without it taking up loads of room in your uh, you know, attic or bedroom or dining room or wherever it is you're shooting your videos. So that's why ring lights are really popular with YouTubers. I don't use one um, simply because my camera's quite a long way away. I would have to have a massive ring light in order to illuminate my face from that distance. So the light I use is basically a fluorescent bulb in a in a light box, in a soft box. I bought this years ago. If I was buying one today, I wouldn't buy this. I would buy an LED panel. You can buy these in all sizes. So if you have one that sits really close to your face, it can be really small or you can get really big ones that sit a bit further away. Basically, as long as it's bright enough, it doesn't really matter what you get. But again, you don't want one that's going to act like a torch that's just going to shine a beam directly in your face that makes it hard to look into the camera and that's going to give you lots of shadows. You ideally want something between the light source and your face that will help diffuse that light. OK, so putting it in a soft box or just hanging a bit of material in between the two so you kind of diffuse the light and it falls in a soft way over your face. That's really what you're aiming for. Third aspect of shooting a good quality video is the camera you're going to use. This is something that people discuss endlessly. My take is if you have good sound and good lighting, a reasonable quality camera will be more than enough. And the camera that you've got on 
a MacBook or an iPhone or an iPad is absolutely great for this purpose. And I'm guessing if you're doing online teaching, you've already got one of these lying around. So don't go out there and buy anything specifically for a video. If you wanted a better camera, you've got to spend a lot of money. OK, so a hundred quid camera probably won't be any better than what you've got on your laptop. I don't use the camera on my laptop. I use a dedicated camera. It's a Fujifilm because I'm putting a lot of time into doing these videos. I don't want it to mess up halfway through. So with this camera and I've got a dedicated recorder and screen for it, I know that once I hit record, it's not going to mess up. That's kind of important to me, but that costs money. So I'm not recommending everyone goes out and does that. The second thing I really like about it is I get this depth of field effect. OK, so if you look at this image, you'll see that I'm in focus, but the background is slightly out of focus. And if I kind of you know wave my hand in front, you'll see that that's out of focus. So there is this depth of field. The bit of the image that is in focus isn't the whole room. It's pretty much just where I'm sitting. I, I think that looks really nice. It helps focus the viewer's attention on me doing talking rather than on all the junk I've got in the background. But that's really just a preference. It's just a stylistic thing. You definitely don't need that. Your video can be really great and high quality without that. I'm basically a bit of a fusspot with this sort of thing. I've invested in my setup. I definitely don't think you should rush out and do that. You can make really great quality videos without doing that, so long as you've got good sound and good lighting. OK, so the one thing I haven't talked about that a lot of people do ask about is what video settings should I use? So whether you're using a camera or your laptop or whatever, basically for nearly every case, you just want to use the default settings. If you have a camera that gives you the options, I would recommend that you lock the exposure. So that means even if the lighting in the room changes, my face won't keep getting darker and lighter, but you don't lock the focus. So if I kind of move back or move forward, the camera will track that. But if you're using a your laptop or your iPhone, you don't have these options because you don't need them. Just use the defaults. One decision that can be important is what size of video are you going to shoot? So is it going to be HD, full HD, 2K, 4K if your camera gives you those options? Here, I would recommend shooting in the highest quality that your camera is going to allow you to do. If you've got a 4K camera, you've gone out and bought an expensive one, why not shoot in 4K? That will allow you to kind of crop your image and it will still look great. Most cameras nowadays will shoot in full HD. So that's 1080p. That means there's 1080 pixels from bottom to top. Some cameras, maybe older cameras, only shoot in 720p. Well, if that's the best option you've got, that's still going to be fine. Most students, I'm guessing, are going to be watching your video on a teeny tiny screen, on a phone, on an iPad, or even if they're looking at it on their desktop, they might not have it blown up full. They'll probably just have it in a small browser. So you don't need a huge number of pixels in your video for it to look great. The lower resolution you shoot in, so the less pixels in the video, the smaller the file size and the easier it will be for your computer to process. It will be quicker to upload. It will be quicker to download, to stream. If you start shooting everything in 4K and then editing it on your computer, it might take you ages, ages to upload. One nice thing about platforms like YouTube is if you upload a full HD video, so 1080p, it will convert it and give the viewer lots of different options. They can watch it in 1080p, 720p, 480p. OK, so if they've got really bad broadband, they can watch it in low res. If they've got great broadband, they can watch it in full res, HD, have it big screen. You've got all the options. So shoot in the highest definition your equipment allows. But if it's only 720p, it really won't matter. So long as you've got good sound and good lighting, and you've got something to say, your video is going to be great. So I hope you found something useful in there. But I do want to say, this is just my experience, my opinion. If you've got advice, suggestions, experience, why don't you leave me a comment below? I think a lot of us are finding this move to online teaching really challenging, really difficult. So if we can share around the experience, share around the advice, it's just going to make it easier for everyone. If you enjoyed the video, why not consider subscribing to the channel? Hit the bell icon to get more updates. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you back next time. <laughs>